When you decided you were going to run for Congress, it was the, uh, the Democratic uh, House, the uh, current uh, representative, Mark Schauer, that you wanted to unseat. But we also have two other Republicans, uh, Marvin Carlson and Tim Wahlberg, that are in the race. Why not let uh, one of those two um, go to Washington? What's wrong with uh, either uh, Wahlberg or Carlson? Well, the problem with former Congressman Wahlberg, in my opinion, is that he already lost to Mark Shower once, and it wasn't because of the Obama tsunami, as some people like to say. It's because he got beat. My dad always taught me the losers make excuses, winners make things happen. It's a tough lesson to learn, but it's a good one to learn. And if, if anyone beats me in the primary, it's because they beat me. And if Mark Shower beats me, it's because they beat me, not some outside factor. But I plan on winning. Um, I, like many people in America right now, don't want to rely on career politicians to fix something that really they're part and parcel of why it's broke. We need some new blood down there, people that the Founding Fathers really envisioned, Jeffersonian politicians that have in their mind that they want to go down there as a citizen legislator and come back home and not be, make it a career out of their lives. And, you know, really that's the fundamental problem I have with Congressman Wahlberg. Um, he's good at saying no, but uh, really we need more people to stand for more than they stand against and say, hey, follow me. Let's get some things done for this state. Um, Marvin's a nice guy. Um, the problem is he doesn't have a lot of name identification throughout the district. And unfortunately, uh, in, in the game of politics, you need to have name identification in order to win, to be successful. And you got to not just be known in Jackson, but you need to be known in Union City. You need to be known in Coldwater all over the place. There's seven counties and it's a big district and you got to have the legs to get there and uh, Marvin just doesn't. Uh, Brian Rooney is with us. He's campaigning for the Republican uh, position on the November ballot in the uh, primary election on Tuesday and you're one of uh, three Republicans and it seems like this race along with the, the three leading Republican gubernatorial candidates are neck and neck are there any polls do you, have you seen? Do you know where you stand? We, I haven't seen any uh, polls internally uh, from any of my opponents since December. Um, I know that there was one, a robocall poll done recently where they had one of my opponents up, but there's been two newspaper polls, one in M Live and one in Adrian, where I was up. The only poll that I really care about is the one on August 3rd. Uh, I believe it's going to be close. I believe I'm either going to win by 1,000 votes or lose by 1,000 votes. That's why. I need to get all my supporters out there, get the vote out. Um, I have a big team that's helping me do that. We have a lot of volunteers, and if people want to volunteer, they can come down to my office anytime. We're basically open 24 hours, knocking on doors, making phone calls, those sorts of things. But, uh, you know, we have tough opponents, but we plan on winning, and we've done everything we can to do that, and uh, I play to win. Uh, one of the former congressmen in the seat, uh, a, a moderate to even moderate liberal uh, Republican, Joe Schwartz, endorsed you. Was, was, that a, was that expected? Was that a surprise to you? Well, it was a little bit of a surprise, but that's how Congressman Schwartz operates. And, uh, but I've said since the beginning that I'm not interested in the petty politics of the past, the fights between Congressman Wahlberg or Congressman Schwartz. I want that fractured our party and why we lost this seat to people like Mark Schauer. Uh, not a moderate Democrat, a liberal Democrat. I want to bring all Republicans together to vote together so that we can win this seat like we used to with Nick Smith, even Joe Schwartz won with 55 to 70, 60 percent of the vote. This is not a liberal district. It's a center right district. And I'm hopeful that I can bring the party together, people like the Joe Schwartzes of the world or the Tom Monahans of the world, and uh, move this district forward so we can get beyond the, the, the divisive past so that we can get our people back to work and give some hope to our children. You're a Marine and you spent a year in Iraq and this year the campaign does not seem to be uh, having any attention on our, our foreign, uh, foreign affairs, particularly uh, Iraq, Afghanistan, Iran. Is the, are we learning enough about what the United States is doing uh, in, in that conflict? And what about your experience uh, brings you an advantage for this seat? I am the only veteran running. I'm the only one that's put a uniform on and served the country in peace or in war. I, I did serve from the summer of 2004 to March uh, 4th of 2005. And I was there for um, you know, the, the huge battle, the second battle of Fallujah and Najaf. 
And I've seen the enemy who our country faces. They're the same enemy that flies the plane to Detroit on Christmas to try to blow it up, the same enemy that tries to blow up Times Square. Um, I've been face to face with Al-Qaeda and our president's naive or I don't know what when he tries to say that we can have a dialogue with these people and you know if they unclench their fish we'll shake their hand. It's, that's not reality. When you have people that are radicalized, that believe that they're divinely mandated by their God to destroy us, there's no conversation that they want to have with you other than we're going to win, we win, you lose. And we as the, really the last vestige of Western civilization, the last great hope for Western civilization have to meet that. And sometimes that means on the field of battle or sometimes it means over the skies of Detroit. And so uh, when we have the specter of radical Islam still uh, facing us, whether it's in the Middle East or even at home, we, we saw Major Nadal, an army radicalized man, uh, kill 14 of our bravest uh, in our own homeland. Um, it's scary. So we need to not pretend that our enemy is some faceless person. We need to know, you know, Ronald Reagan called the Soviet Empire evil. I call radical Islam evil. We also have the specter of a million North Koreans streaming across the border in South Korea. They just bombed a South Korean warship, killed 45 sailors. That's an act of war. I'm not too sure where the Red Chinese will go if that happens. We have to go to South Korea because that's our treaty with them. And we're still technically at war. And so I often think of national security issues where my opponents may not just because they don't have that mindset. So if China's making our bullets, beans, and band-aids, and we are in a tough spot in South Korea, and they own a lot of our debt, I'm very concerned if we're outsourcing our manufacturing, outsourcing our foodstuffs, um, and then they own our debt, what's going to happen if we do ever need to protect ourselves? So uh, we need people in D.C. that think about those things because we are still at war in Afghanistan. Hopefully we're pulling out of Iraq very soon. And I believe we should and will because they're going to form a new government. We, that should be something the president uh, praises, but he refuses to even mention Iraq. It's kind of a forgotten place. And that's unfortunate because when you go to war, you go to war as a country, not as a party. And the same in Afghanistan. Um, you know, we, I think we lost six, four to six men this, today in Afghanistan. Uh, we need to not forget about them and support them regardless of who the party is or the president is that's there. Um, politics should stop at the at the at the boundaries edge there at the Atlantic or the Pacific. And well, I know President Obama said before he was elected that he was going to have an end game for our involvement. What is the what is the end game? Where, how long, when will this end? Well, Iraq it should end very soon because if they form a new government, they had an election, and they should form it soon. We should pull our troops out, you know, the next week. We don't have many troops there as it is anymore. The status of force agreement that we agreed to there, we're at the level we said we would be right now, and that's a good thing. Um, in Afghanistan, I supported the president because I thought it important to support our commander in chief in a time of war when we have a mission there. And um, I'm not as hopeful for Afghanistan in the regards of what we'll have the success in Iraq, nation building as we will in Afghanistan, because it's not the same countries. They're very different peoples, very different mindsets. Um, I kind of am of the belief now that uh, if we have a MU, a Marine Expeditionary Force off the coast of about 15,000 Marines, we can keep the Taliban at bay with Predator drones in the air and then we can still hunt for Osama bin Laden and Waziristan or wherever else he is with special forces and that's how I to handle Afghanistan. You know, we can't have the long war of eight plus years of 150,000 plus troops on the ground in Afghanistan. You need to learn something from history and Afghanistan is where empires go to die. And uh, I don't want the American empire to go there to die either. It's uh, three days in counting until uh, the primary election day on, uh, on Tuesday. Good luck and thanks for coming in. All right. Thank you very much. Right. I appreciate it. Candidate for U.S. House, Brian Rooney.